435 Class A teams opened regional play 20 days ago. Two teams are left. Mount Carroll and Hales Franciscan for the Class A state title next on the IHSA TV network. Welcome to Carver Arena in downtown Peoria, site of Illinois March Madness, America's original March Madness. It's the moment these teams have been waiting for since last fall. They were working out all during the summer. It all comes down to the final 32 minutes of basketball here tonight. It's Mount Carroll, ranked number two in the state, against Hales Franciscan of Chicago, number six in the state. One of these teams will go home with a state championship trophy here tonight. For the call of tonight's championship game, we go to Jim Albrecht and Matt Taphorn. Thank you very much, Lee Hall. It is the night, and of course, no Chicago team has won a Class A state championship since 1985. Will that end this evening? Well, fatigue could be a factor as far as Mount Carroll is concerned. It certainly could. Hales Franciscan played the first semifinal game today. And uh, Mount Carroll certainly played a tougher game this afternoon. Got over about 3 o'clock, so they didn't get a lot of rest. We'll see if they're fresh tonight. Let's check out the road to Peoria. First for the Hawks from Mount Carroll. They got the Rock Falls monkey off their back, took care of Abingdon at the mark, and then in the quarterfinal fought off Auburn and a tough game against Cairo today. As far as Hales Franciscan, they've been breezing against Leo got it done, Driscoll, then breezing against Breeze Central, and of course, today's semifinal win as well. If you've been watching it all, then you know who we're going to talk about when it comes to Mount Carroll. If you haven't, you're going to enjoy watching this young man. Yeah, Jeremy Hass has just been unbelievable in this tournament. 29 points in the semifinal game against Carroll. Struggled from the free throw line and only 5 out of 17. Has 50 points in the two ball games here in Peoria. He's the, the bull for this team. Really needs to get a charge them and really carry them as he did in the first half against Carroll earlier. As far as Hales Franciscan is concerned, a sophomore in high school with a sophomore body in college. And yeah, Nate Manoy averages about 17, 16 points a game, but he'll be a great matchup against Haas because he's so strong inside. It'll be a great bull against bull matchup. Let's take a look at some of the keys very quickly. Uh, key number one might be about 15 feet away from the bucket for Mount Carroll because they had a heck of a time this afternoon at the free throw line. They certainly did. 22 out of 44, and hopefully they just forgot about it in the afternoon and didn't practice those free throws, but they need to concentrate tonight. They need to certainly avoid foul trouble. They're not quite as deep as Hales Franciscan and play under control. Don't get caught up in a full court game. Go under control when they do have the break. Yeah, Mount Carroll likes to run, but tonight we'll see if they slow it down a little bit. As far as Hales Franciscan, and they can attack you at both ends. Absolutely. Defensively, they really look for full court pressure, look to put the push the ball, take advantage of opportunities when they have them. But the key here is no Hass whooping. Can you say that? They can't let Jer Jeremy Hass get off and score one of his 30, 35 point games and clearly wear them down. Deeper team, make uh, Hass and Mount, Mount Carroll work a little bit harder in this ball game coming off a more recent semifinal game. Both teams finishing their final warm-ups. Their coaches will have some final words for them. The Peoria Civic Center is packed. It is ready to explode. We'll see how it all turns out. The stage is set. The lights are bright and the game is on. The Class A State Championship is coming up. Let's throw it to our public address announcer, Paul Whitey Herzog, and get tonight underway. Good evening, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria, welcome to America's original March Madness. Tonight's Class A championship game features the Spartans of Hales Franciscan, 26 and 6, and the Mount Carroll Hawks, 32 and 1. At this time, please stand and to honor America, remove your caps and address the flag with your hand over your heart as a senior from Westfield High School, Katie Oreskovich, sings our national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last? 
gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh the starting lineup for the nice championship contest. At a guard from Mount Carroll, a 6'1 junior, 21, Jordan Delp. At a guard for Hales Franciscan, a 6'1 junior, number 10, Gerard Haynes. For the Hawks, the 5'9 senior, 23, Colin Bowsman. For the Spartans, a six-foot guard, a senior, 12, Blake Kraft. For Mount Carroll, a 5'10 guard, a senior, 25, Devin Schneider. For Hales Franciscan, a 6'4 forward, a senior, 14, Nathan Hood. For the Hawks, 6'5", senior forward, 31, Jeremy Haas. For the Spartans, a 6'2", senior, 15, Lavelle Richardson. At center for Mount Carroll, a 6'7", senior, 53, Brett Yoakum. And for Hales Franciscan, a 6'3", forward, a sophomore, Nate Manoy. Head coach at Mount Carroll in his fourth season, a record of 107 and 14, Chris Payne. Head coach at Hales Franciscan in his fourth season, a record of 76 and 39, Gary London. No other state. Let's take a look at those starting lineups before we tip it off for the game of the Class A season in Illinois. Jay Hass, Mr. Yoakum, the center who got into foul trouble this afternoon. Delp lights it up from the outside. Bowsman and Schneider who runs the point. Richardson, the great sophomore, Manoy, Hood, Haynes, and Kraft. And they can get scoring from all of those gentlemen. They really can. They've got four guys averaging in double figures this year and uh, great balance for their team, but certainly Manoy is the go-to guy. And again, this is discussed a lot, but how about the legs of these players right now? How will they respond to playing their second game of the day? And you don't know until you see the jump shots go up. Well, we have to remember these guys are 16, 17, 18 years old. They're uh, a little bit more resilient than you and I might be, but you know, certainly it's uh, a challenge to go in there and, and know that you've gone through an exhilarating semifinal game and have to come back in this type of atmosphere under these th type of circumstances. But these guys are out here ready to compete. This is what they've been playing for all season. Hales Franciscan came awful close to a state championship just 10 years ago in 1993 when Tom Shields led his team on the bench for a second place finish. And the tip, as you see, controlled. And there's Jared Haynes. On the block, they go to the sophomore Manoy, who gets it blocked from behind by Yoakum. Out comes Jeremy Hass, who can run with the big boys. Contact out front. They'll slow it down and set it up with Devin Snyder. With the ball is Jordan Delp, and now on the wing they go. Big statement, the first trip down defensively for Yoakum making that big block against Manoy. Out of control and out of bounds. Turnover, and Mount Carroll gives it up on their first trip down. Take a look at the officials. 
Bruce Jockish, Ronald Coleman, and Timothy Leish. It's an honor to officiate for the state championship game as well. Well, certainly these guys work hard all season to get to this point as well, and they're rated throughout the year and evaluated constantly, and these three were the top of the state. Kraft with the opening salvo. Blake Kraft, who hit 74 threes on the year, nails one here in his first state championship game. When you take a look at where these teams come from, not that far apart, but we've got uh, more or less a northern gathering here as opposed to a southern representation, which is often the case in Class A. Well, there's a foul on Jared Haynes coming from behind with Snyder bringing the ball up court. Mount Carroll with a population of just over 1,700. Of course, Chicago has just a few more than that. That spells traffic jams, by the way. Cook <laughs> County, Carroll County. In enrollment, 586 in favor of Hales. Only 149 for Mount Carroll. And the last time Mount Carroll was in a state tournament, this is worth repeating, 1911. This has the great small town versus big city appeal to it. And certainly Mount Carroll's been up to the challenge all season long. Delp misses his first three. In the quarterfinals, Delp was hot early. In the semifinals, he was cold early, but picked it up. And tonight, he misfires on his first shot. Coach Hales Gary London from Hales yelling 20. Hales fortunate to have that ball. I thought it was tipped out of bounds against Hales under, underneath as Jeremy Haas was going after that offensive rebound. Hood. Just kick it around the outside. They're going low block for Richardson. He skies and buys. Hales has so many different weapons out there. Certainly, Yoakum needs to be a factor inside, as does Cass, and so far that has not been the case. Another turnover. And keep this in mind, it's awful early, but with the great quickness of Hales Franciscan, they can spread out an offense and eat up an awful lot of clock when they grab a lead. Down the lane and counting him up is Jared Haynes. And Mount Carroll wants to talk it over, and that's not a bad idea. They're off to their worst case scenario. Down seven, nothing. Of course, Hales Franciscan has it going. This IHSA broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. It's a lot of fun to play in our system. We get up and down real well, and just it creates opportunities for all of us to get a lot of shots, and I guess I've really benefited, benefited from our offense, obviously with a lot of threes. Yeah, a whole lot of threes. Jordan Delp hit five of eight in the quarterfinals. He came back with a 24-point effort this afternoon. And they're going to need some more of that tonight, Matt. He's averaged nearly seven three-point attempts per game on the season. Had one in the early going, but Hales has just dominated from the outset. Again, that full court pressure and the pressure of moving the ball up the floor, and they've really taken it to him, spread the offense out, and taken it straight down the lane. And they've got to get the big man Yoakum up to help out, and they do. Devin Steiner, the key to the offense, according to head coach Chris Payne, who's won 107 games in four years. Can Haskett on track? He's working against Richardson, cross courts it. They've only gotten one shot off so far. This will be the second one. No, it won't. Stripped away down low. On the run, Jared Haynes against Delp. Count him up. Nine. Zip. Great transition. It all started with the strip by Hood and going the other way for the easy lay-in. There's the answer. Provided by Jeremy Haas. Who else? Haas had a good look that time, about 15 feet on the baseline. Nice soft touch. It was that 15-footer from square away that he wasn't able to knock down at great regularity earlier today. Keep your eye on Nate Lenoy, number 33, because he plays under great control for being so young, only a sophomore. And that body doesn't come through the weight room either. There's a turnaround jumper. Not there. Only the second miss on the evening so far in the first few minutes of the ball game. Another miss at the other end. Almost was tipped in on that defensive tip. Lavelle Richardson called for palming the basketball. So checking into the ball game now for Hales Franciscan, and they'll run three or four subs off the bench. Mike Robinson, number three, will check in.
Hales is very impressive. They have such a versatile team. The guys can interchange out there on the floor, and even a guy like Nate Manoy at his size. Very flexible out on the perimeter. Nathan Hood sets down for a while for the Spartans who come in at 26 and 6, ranked number 6 in the state. Mount Carroll hasn't lost to a Illinois team all year, and now they don't advance the ball before the five-second call. So another turnover, and those are called unforced ones. Yeah, good defensive pressure out on the floor that time by Gerard Haynes. Again, just getting close enough to him, keeping the, the ball bouncing anyway, the five-second call made by the official. Checking out is Snyder, and in is Mosier. And in the lane is Manoy, but it's knocked away and gathered in by Yoakum. Good battle inside between those two. Yoakum needs to have a big game. Was shut down in the game earlier today. Wasn't much of a help to his team with only eight points and three rebounds. Justin Mosier working out front, and Delt shake free. Robinson's all over him. Mosier doesn't usually put him up. Pass will. He's going to force a floater. He takes it off That's the glass. Foul. What was that? Well, it was, he was trying to pass it to himself. But, you know, it's not a bad play in that situation, but he went over the back of the, the defender trying to get the rebound. Well, that's a... That's a, it's a play, play. Yeah, you wouldn't see you would think you might see that play in a state championship game but and his teammates really got on him there uh, down the floor that's a great sign that you can get on a star all-state player like that when he makes a, a silly play and the team really jumped on him that time yeah maybe an nba all-star game but i don't know robinson pulls up gets too much iron there for the rebound is Benoit, and fighting is yokum and it's loose and gathered in as haynes sets it up Haynes wants it, doesn't get what he's after, but Manoy has the rebound and he passes it up. I thought he'd go back in. Outside, long jumper is not there by Kraft. Kraft really didn't have his feet in position very well that time. He had one about two feet in front of the other one. Very poor balance. As we told you, it's been a long time for Mount Carroll. They appeared in the very first state champions again. Steal out front by Blake Kraft. This will be easy. Well, Kraft made up for that three-point shot with a nice steal on layup. Again, that constant pressure, full court, full game for Hales. And this will wear him down early, too, even if Mount Carroll gets back in. The gas tank's going to be a little light come the second half. Delp, he's missed his only shot. See how they extend the offense? Make them come out even further than they want. And Haynes really giving Jordan Delp all he can handle inside. Mount Carroll, of course, seeking to become only the second boys class A team to win the Moline Super Sectional, played at the mark, of course, and the state title in the same season. Rock Falls, which won five straight sectionals before falling this year, too. Mount Carroll is the only team that can claim both those spots. It's Haynes hanging to Manoy, and Manoy was bothered, but it's back up and in by Lavelle Richardson. Richardson had a huge super sectional with 21 points. He's been kind of quiet down here in Peoria, but he puts his team up 13-2. The energy out there is so different between these two teams. We touched on that earlier. The time, can't of, buy the time of the game when Mount Carroll played is hurting them right now. Manoy one on one and done. That is a complete mismatch at the other end. 15 to two, Hales off to a tremendous start. The defense is something that you really can't prepare for when it comes to the speed of a defense. And right now, Mount Carroll is trying to adjust, Matt, and they're not doing a good job. Well, they seem to be getting frustrated. They've had an easier time for the majority of the season in transition, getting the ball up and down the floor, and Hales is with them step for step this ball game, if not a step ahead of them, more, more majority of the time. Hales from Siskin contesting everything, every pass in. Down low, Yoakum, he needs it, he can't hold on to it. Didn't need that dribble. Robinson gets it over to Kraft, he can't get it. Robinson gets it back, and it's a 17 to two lead. Robinson started the play by stripping the ball at one end and got the hustle, rebounded, lay in at the other. And you hope Mount Carroll's not out of it yet for their sake, because they've worked so hard this year just to get here, to overcome the Rock Falls jinx.
Hales Franciscan, of course, making three appearances. And of course, in 93, as I mentioned earlier, placing second with Tom Shields at the helm. Well, everybody gathered here at the Carver Arena wants to see a tight one. Unless, of course, you're Hales Franciscan. And now we got a foul out front. Now, Carroll, the second ranked team in the state this year, and their only defeat, as we had talked about before, coming to a team out of the state of Illinois. But uh, they've got their hands full tonight. Well, they played over seven minutes and they've scored one basket. And that is something that no coach wants to see happen in any game, much less the pinnacle. But it's all defense. On the energy between the two teams, just the way they're walking around and Hales is out there on their toes, both ends of the floor, and, and seems like Mount Carroll's flat-footed for the most part. Pass can't get it. Rebound tipped around. Here comes Mike Robinson. Robinson in a hurry as Hales Franciscan always is. And what a drive. Mount Carroll just does not have an answer. They don't have an answer, and they're going to get worn out just trying to work against this pressure. And Hales just gets the ball from one end of the floor to the other so quickly. Yeah, they kind of fed exit, don't they? <laughs> Gets there in a hurry. 19 to 2, I did not expect this. And another interior pass contested. Yokum just can't get his hands on it. You know, I, I had a feeling that towards the, the second semifinal game earlier between Mount, Mount Carroll and, and Cairo, or Carroll, that the, the difference there was Mount Carroll seemed to get tired, and that's why they're missing a lot of their free throws. And I think that's really starting to wear on him right now in this ballgame. Sometimes, oh, and there's another turnover. Pass could hang on to it. Manoy looking down. Two seconds. Pulls up from 30. And he's a little shy. But nothing shy about the effort here from Hales Franciscan. All Chicago in the first quarter. 19 to 2. We're back after these local messages. We are back at the Peoria Civic Center where it's been all Hales Franciscan and with two points on the board and nine turnovers, Manoy gets in there and cannot get it to fall and finally Mount Carroll gets somewhat of a break. There's a long pass to Hass. He can't control off his hands and the other way we come and that's turnover number 10 and keep your eye on little number 50, Jerome Randall for Hales Franciscan, only a freshman. They say he weighs 120, but I don't know about that. I think that's about 10 pounds with the uniform and the shoes on the scale as well. That, that might be soaking wet, but that, that kid is a thrill to watch. Also into the ball game, Ivano Clay wearing number five. This is Hood, has some trouble with it. We'll go up with a 16-footer and nail it. They can't miss, Mount Carroll can't hit. And the lopsided score continues. Well, you can't hit what you don't shoot. Yeah, that's right. That's 11 turnovers, only six shots in this ball game, and 15 out of the 21 points that Hales Franciscan has scored here in this ball game have come off those turnovers. And Matt, you suspect that Mount Carroll, being the good team they are, will right themselves. But when you're down by almost 20, I don't know they've ever been in this situation this year. They've beaten teams by an average of 30 points a game this season. The closest game they've seen all season was seven. That was in the quarterfinal game against Auburn. And they haven't faced this kind of a deficit. They've only had three games within seven points as far as the final score. Now they're down by 19. And they seem to have pulled the offense out a little bit to try to bring out the Mount Carroll defense. I'm not sure I would have changed anything. I'm not sure if I would have changed anything offensively the way they were going at this game, but uh, that was the decision made, and Mount Carroll's going to come away with the turnover. Jerome Randall wanted to argue a little bit with the official, but his head coach, Gary London, said, hey, we're not about that. Get back down the floor. 21 to 2. I've done a lot of state championship games in Class A. I don't remember anybody getting out in front that hard. And it just builds so much confidence in Hales Franciscan. You can't, you can't equate it. They can be loosey goosey now. They can take their time. They don't have to force anything. 6:36 remaining, as you can see at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Jamal Breck, Matt Taphorn, and Lee Hall, wondering if 
Jordan Delp and company can come back. They go low post. Pass contested at every angle. Misses it. And we've got a jump ball. Possession Rebound with Carol. Lavelle Richardson. Again, Haas is having to work for everything down in there. That's one for seven from the field now for Mount Carroll. Really struggling to get anything going offensively with the quickness that we're seeing out there from Hales. And until you play against it, you just can't, you can't simulate it. There's a bad pass. Out front, stolen by Randall. Randall's got all the moves a freshman can buy. I like that one. <laughs> and he trapped. He got the steal and gave it right back. That, you know, he gets out there. He, he's a very flashy player. He likes to listen to the crowd hoot and holler a little bit. But that time he got called for the turnover. There's a record you don't want, Matt. No, and, and uh, my buddy Brad Gregorich is playing on that team. He's at home watching this game now. And Brad, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Jeremy Hass gets his second bucket of the game. And it's 21-4. And in a hurry is Clay. And Clay can't get it. But there's the offensive glass by Richardson. He can't get it. Back up is Johnson. And we've got a foul underneath on Johnson. Andre Johnson, the senior, who scored four this afternoon in the semifinal victory. We've showed you Mount Carroll's season high during the course of this tournament. They will need to get going. <laughs> yeah, the low of 44 might be matched tonight if they can't find some offense. They need a spark. They need a couple of threes. And Hales Franciscan not allowing it to happen. Hass strong to the home. It's Jeremy Hass six. Hales Franciscan 21. If they can cut this lead down below 10 before the half, they'll feel pretty good about themselves. Well, they just need to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Certainly 12 turnovers. You can't expect too much, but they just need to stay with the game plan, pick it up defensively, and take care of the basketball. Clay drops it down low to Johnson. Yeah, he didn't We've got a whistle and another trouble. And now, you know, you're starting to see the opposite. Hales has shuffled some guys in, in the ball game, some substitutions. They've created some turnovers. That's five in the ball game now for Hales. And now the tide's starting to turn back a little bit towards Mount Carroll. Jared Haynes, Blake Kraft, and Nathan Hood come back into the ball game. They started this thing, and now they're back out there with just about five minutes to play in the first half. Delp just can't even get any kind of separation from his defender to launch a three. No, and that certainly was the game plan. I'm sure you get it. You can do what you can inside it's a little easier to find him but you got to get the quickness out against Jordan Delp he's one of the quickest players that Mount Carroll has as well one of the unusual numbers in the state tournament deals with Hales Franciscans coaching staff they have eight assistant coaches four on the bench here's a jumper need it does not go for Justin Mosier quickly the other way is Richardson Forcing it his hood, he'll spin and hit it. Man. Now he even shakes his head after that one. That Good spin one move that time shot. inside. Delp, that's way off the mark. Rebound has back up. Did he walk or was he fouled? Give him the bucket and the free throw. You know, I really like the way Haas goes up for the rebound with two hands, very strong. He's able to draw the contact and go back in. There's really not anybody outside of Manoy who's going to be able to challenge him inside with the body and trying to prevent it from scoring. We just saw a shot of head coach Chris Payne from Mount Carroll. That name may be spelled P-A-I-N right now. Pass, who had some difficulties at the line this afternoon, does not hear. And the lead is 14 for Hales Franciscan. Checking in is Mike Robinson. Checking out Nathan Hood, who made that spectacular shot after being forced into the corner along the baseline. We've got a timeout. Hales Franciscan continues to main stay. Let's go to Lee Hall with a proud pair, Lee. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. We're with George Delp. Uh, this isn't the first time you and your son have been here to the state tournament. You guys came here four years ago. Tell me that story real quick. Well, four years ago when we were here, Jordan and uh, Devin and Brett Yoakum and Colin Bowsman and I were sitting here watching this tournament. And I said, I've been coming to these tournaments for about 12 years. I'm tired of not seeing Mount Carroll here. And at that point, they promised me that they'd get me here. And they lived good to their promise and got us here and have made us proud. Did they say anything about comebacks? 
they're good at comebacks. <laughs> Can good. they come back from this one? I think so. I, I haven't given up on them yet. All right, and this is uh, George's grandson, Keegan. Yeah, he, he he is given up on this game, but the rest of the Mount Carroll fans haven't. <laughs> Thanks, George. Back to you, Jim. Sweet dreams, little man. It's a long weekend, but uh, certainly a lot of fun and a great story. Snyder. There's the muscle guy. Jeremy Hess. Again, Mount Carroll's being patient offensively, getting their good shot look, opportunities, good looks. Defensively, they've created some turnovers. Just need to stay with the game plan. And get somebody else involved. Hass can't score them all, as he has right now. Jumper out front, way off the mark by Lavelle Richardson. And Hales, I think, has really changed what they had started out with. They were attacking offensively, and now they're just kind of laying back. Speaking of the attacking, there's Jordan Dunn. His dad will give a thumbs up for that move. And suddenly it is down to 10, 23-13. Richardson, it's loose for a moment. Out front, Kraft to the side, no. Rebound, Yoakum. Here comes the Hawks with a little bit of a momentum build. Absolutely. Tighter shots now going up for Hales, not getting those good looks. Boy, Pass has some strong hands. This is the three they need. Don't get it. Back up, Pass, no. Pass again, five. Oh. That would have been a huge three, but even two coming away here will be well, okay. And Hass really missed that putback, point blank range, and frustrated with himself a little bit. Sometimes the easy ones are the hardest ones. Gary London, the coach for Hales Franciscan, really shouting at his team right now to get the job done on the offensive end. It was 21 to two, folks. At the beginning of this one, free throw is not there. Again, as we saw in the semifinal game, Jeremy Hass kind of stepping backwards as he shoots the ball. Doesn't really get his momentum going to the rim. Marcus Fultz will check in. He had a pretty good game in the semifinals, putting in some good minutes on the floor after some foul trouble for Mount Carroll. This one misses as well. Well, a golden opportunity that started with a missed three and a possible putback comes up empty, and now Hales Franciscan eyes the court. Up by 10 with Jared Haynes. Just eating some time, and as I said before, they can do this very, very well. And right now, Mount Carroll doesn't want to wear themselves out chasing the basketball this early in the game. And this is where I think the momentum changed. As soon as Hales brought the ball yeah. out and started to spread the floor, they lost some of the flow that they had in the ball game, and, and now they've kind of backed off a little bit and aren't attacking. Up top, there's two. Lavelle Richardson with the basket and a foul underneath. It looks like it'll go against Hales Franciscan. Nate Manoy. And it will be on Manoy. And that will result in some foul shots at the other end because now Mount Carroll, well, they should be in the bonus. And they finally call it, and it is in the bonus. Richardson left open and Yoakum pretty much dared him to shoot about a 10, 12 foot shot. And he knocked that one down with little trouble. 18 fouls now on Hales Franciscan. Manoy only one personal foul. Manoy, of course, rhymes with annoy, which happens a lot to opposing coaches. Free throws up and in. See, when you watch Manoy out there, it reminds me of a local product here from Peoria, Sergio McLean, that played the University of Illinois in four state championships at Peoria Manual. He's got the same build about him, and he started at Peoria Manual for four straight seasons. And like we said before, he doesn't really hit the weight room. He's just starting to, but there's a turnover. Coming the other way is Mount Carroll. They're down by 10. Hass forcing it, won't get it. Rebound, Hass, and it's controlled by Hales Franciscan. Boy. A couple of opportunities by Jeremy Hass on the last two trips down, but nothing to show for it. And he tried to, Robinson. tried to shoot the last one nearly on his back as he was going down to the floor. Richardson, they dared him last time. This time he'll step back with two minutes remaining in the first half. And Mount Carroll trying to find some kind of answer. Keep an eye Richardson on Manoy down again. the baseline. Boy, Richardson has a nice little soft touch from about 12, 10, 12 feet right in Yoakum's face. Lavelle, who scored 21 in the super sectional win against Driscoll, is finding a stroke tonight. Ooh, long cross court pass. Pass, gets it stripped. Kraft has it. Kraft won't slow down. He'll 
dish it off, but that is an errant shot by Haynes, but back up. No, again, Manoy, no. And out of bounds to Malcaro. Off craft. Boy, give Jokic some credit there. He really battled for that rebound and didn't foul, but Hale's just really putting the pressure on. They convert those turnovers to fast break opportunities in a hurry. And just to emphasize how good this Hales Franciscan defense is, they're shutting down the highest scoring team in the tournament, as you can see. Of the eight teams who made it to Peoria, 75 per game is tops. Pass, strong, count it. 10 points is the margin again. Pass went in there knowing that was going to be a battle with Manoy inside. He was able to get the two. Almost a turnover. Robinson calls a timeout. That's a smart timeout there. He realized there might be a 10 second violation, called the timeout. Dell has two for Mount Carroll. Fultz has two in a reserve role. And Hass has 13. Let's go into the huddle with Hales Franciscan coach. Okay, let's see what the Hales Franciscan coach had to say before this game. Here is Mr. Gary London. Uh, it was basically about you know th things uh, coming down to the tournament. Uh, he gave me a lot of a, a lot of good wisdom, you know. From, uh, and Tom's been down here about five times, and he was the guy that brought Hills down here in 1993. So he gave me a lot of good advice, a lot of good wisdom, uh, you know, about managing uh, our time down here, managing the the uh, the tournament, uh, making sure that the kids are, are focused. And and so it wasn't so much on the floor stuff that he told me about. It was a lot of off the floor management things that he told me about that uh, being a rookie coach down here uh, you know hopefully I won't get overwhelmed with a lot of things and and so I was really appreciative of, of some of the advice he gave me talking about his mentor Tom Shields Mr. Shields knows a little bit about winning he took the last Chicago team to the class A state championship Providence St. Mel they had a few athletes on that team didn't they back in 1985 uh, Lowell Hamilton I think was the yeah, name that yeah. uh, you know very prominent player on that team uh, but, you know, Tom Shields did a great job there. He was at Pekin for some years now at Pontiac, but Gary London has done a great job at Hales, and, and I think that's an important to, thing to think about is when you're on a weekend like this, certainly to have control of the uh, other things going on outside of the game. Gary London, a very class act, as is head coach Chris Payne. In the middle they go. Kraft fakes a shot, and they use some clock here up by 10. Yoakum and, and Hass has switched positions. Now Hass is in the middle defensively. Yoakum down to the baseline, trying to get out and, and b bother Richardson a little bit with that mid-range jump shot. The coach wants one shot. London Collin, to quote the old song. Oh, almost a turnover out front. Richardson maintains control. Hass trying to read the mail, but Kraft will get it inside of Richardson. Jumper too hard. Pass fighting for the rebound. Tips it out. Time of essence. Six seconds. Down the lane goes Robinson and gets it. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Devin Snyder hit the three. Yes, from and the it counts. Half court. And it does count. And if you want just one bit of boost of energy, an omen that might be it as far as Mount Carroll is concerned that was a line drive 51 footer on the bank watch this play to end the half beyond half court from about 60 feet banks that one in to cut the lead to nine at halftime well uh, for all their troubles in the first quarter scoring that one had to shake up everybody here at the Peoria Civic Center let's see what coach Gary London has to say leading by nine here's Lee Hall well, Coach, in between games, I know you're busy getting prepared, but somebody won 500 bucks for hitting a shot like that in between games. That was the only mistake you guys made in the first half, I think. Yeah, we pretty good, did a pretty good job uh, defensively in the first quarter. I think in the second quarter, we lost some of our intensity, which, you know, for four quarters, it's hard to maintain that uh, intensity for the whole game. But uh, for the most part, we want to let our guys know, again, we're just trying to win it quarter by quarter. What do you tell your team you don't want this to – this kind of thing, a half-court shot like that, to change the momentum. Well, I can see it in our guys' eyes walking off the court. I just start saying, "Hey, it's okay, it's okay. We're up. They got a little bit of momentum there with that shot, but you know, I'll get them fired back up." We know this game's important. Coach London went from the red sweater to the suit and tie. Did you guys notice that, Coach? Good luck to your second half. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, back to you, Jim. 
Lee Hall continues to set the style pace here at the Peoria Civic Center. We're back after these local messages. We are back at Carver Arena, the place still buzzing about that beyond half court shot by Devin Snyder. Man, couldn't make that again. Let's go to our good friend Paul Whitey Herzog, who's going to start awarding some hardware here for third and fourth place finishes at state. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midcourt for the presentation of the third and fourth place team and individual awards for the 2003 Class A March Madness State Finals Tournament. Presenting medallions will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors attending tonight's game. They are Catherine Flanagan of Chicago Manley Division I, Dr. Frank Stout of Summit Argo Division Three, Vice President Emmett Aubrey of Genesea Donnell Division IV, Ron McGraw of Knoxville, Division VI. President Patrick Sullivan of Roxana, Division VII. Dr. Diane Dyer Dawson of Chicago Collins, an at-large member. Secretary Catherine Finch of Winnebago, an at-large member. And Treasurer Gregory Bradley of Mount Zion. At this time, meet the pilots of Cairo, who finished the 2003 season in fourth place with a record of 28 and 6. <laughs> Superintendent, Dr. Robert Iso. Principal, Mr. Carl Riley. Athletic Director, Larry Morris. Head coach, Larry Baldwin. <laughs> Assistant coach, Arthaniel Davis. <laughs> Assistant coach, Tommy Ellis. Assistant coach, Ron Woods. <laughs> Assistant coach, Theoda Ross. <laughs> and now the pilots. Number five, Jeremy Hardiman. Ten, Anthony Duncan. Fifteen, Brandon Childs. Twenty-two, Anthony Mackin. Twenty-five, Gary Williams. 30, Devontae Williams. 45, Roman Wright. 33, Seville Bell. 35, 
Kalen Low. Forty, Jason Cross. Fifty, Anthony Jackson. Twenty, Byron Johnson. Thirteen, Eric Williams. Thirty-two, Chris Davis. And forty-two, Jeremy Woods. The pilots of Cairo High School. At this time, meet the Cardinals of Warrensburg Latham, who finished the season in third place. Record of 32 and 3. Superintendent, Dr. Michael Alexander. Principal, K. Scott Metal. Athletic Director, Cindy Butkovich Harris. Activity Director, Ken Hatcher. Head Coach, Victor Binkley. Assistant Coach, Mark Klein. Assistant Coach, Zach Campbell. Athletic Trainer, Damon Boots. And the Cardinals, number 10, Andy Kalmus. <laughs> 30, Chase Chauber. <laughs> 52, Court Long. <laughs> 40, Jeff Doyle. Fourteen, Jeremy Offenbaugh. Double zero, Wes Heinkel. Four, Brant Niebuhr. Twenty, Trevor Binkley. Twenty-two, Adams Kronzhagen. 42, West Littrell. 34, Corey Maloney. 50, Nick Brownfield. 24, Matt Massey. 44, Matt Kaczynski. 12, Carl Dignan. And 32, Ab Crony. At this time, will Coach Baldwin and the captains of Cairo, Step Forst, receive their fourth place trophy? Congratulations to the pilots of Cairo. There you go. Hang on, guys. It's heavy. At this time, will Coach Binkley and the captains of Orangeburg Latham step forward to receive the third place trophy? Congratulations to both schools. More than 700 started the event. You're in the top four in the state of Illinois. Class A, 2003. Congratulations.
been handed out. We're back to set the stage for the second half of the state title game after these local messages. Mount Carroll got a bolt of lightning from Devin Snyder from beyond midcourt to cut it to single digits here before the half. And uh, I tell you, we knew Mount Carroll would come back. Just how far can they come back? They were down 21-2 to a great Hales Franciscan defense. Well, I think in halftime you make some of those adjustments. They made some of those adjustments already in the latter part of the second quarter and really taking better care of the ball and getting their shot opportunities in a half-court set and limiting Hales Franciscan with their penetration to the basket. And the question will be, can Mount Carroll shake free to get some of their regular offense going? Because Jeremy Haas, I don't know if he can carry the load all night long. No, and Jordan Delp certainly, certainly did not help in that first half with only two points. But we saw that at him, him in the semifinal game where he really got going in the second half as well. The numbers are good right now for Hales Franciscan, 29-20. But let's take a look at how they break down here at halftime of the Class A game. We'll start, of course, with the turnovers, and that's a big factor. Well, certainly the turnovers, but again, from a foul situation, um, Hales Franciscan only committed or only having no free throws because Mount Carroll only committed one foul in that whole first half. Rebounding is pretty even with the exception of turnovers, and we'll see that here in a second. You know, clearly the early part, the first quarter, nine turnovers, and even into the first minute of the second quarter, a couple more, 11 turnovers in the first nine minutes of the ball game certainly hurt Mount Carroll. But then they corrected some of that and started to get back in the ball game. We again we'll touch on that one foul. Not very aggressive, and that was allowing Hales Franciscan to get to the basket and score some easy points. They didn't really send some messages here in the second half and be more aggressive and more physical. Let's take a look at some of the leading scorers right now. And keep in mind, Mount Carroll hit 193s during the course of the regular season, only one, and that the beyond the half-court bomb before the buzzer. As we know, Mr. Haas. Well, he's a load, but he needs help. And you don't see Jordan Delp's name on there, and that's that's key. They need to get him going, averaging nearly 14 points a ball game. And on the other side, you don't see Nate Minoy in the, the leading scores either. So he really hasn't been much of a factor, but right now it has, hasn't really needed to be. Let's see how good Chris Payne is feeling about being down by nine. Here's Lee Hall. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. Uh, Coach down 19 to 2, 21 to 2 at one point. You got to forget that math and go with the 18 9 run that got you back within nine. Yeah, the kids did a good job battling back there. We just turned the ball over way too much there in the first quarter and then we dug ourselves a hole, but uh, they did a good job coming back and I think it's a new game now. What's key for you here, second half? Well, we got to take care of the ball and make sure we get a shot every possession. And that killed us there early. And if we take care of the ball and get good shots, you know, we'll make a game out of it. All right, coach. Good luck to you. All right, thanks. All right, Jim, back to you those turnovers they had 13 that's what the coach was talking about in the first half we're back to set up the second half of the championship game after these local messages if you weren't with us in the opening minutes this is how it happened yeah certainly Jared Haynes got off to a quick start some penetration down the lane Nate Minoy with his only basket and seven attempts in the first half and certainly Mr. Haas inside at 13 points in the first half. Then as the action got going, certainly we got uh, Mike Robinson involved in, in play, but to end the half, the big shot, full, about 60 foot three point shot by Devin Schneider to pull it, this ball game within nine points. Gotta be impressed with the sophomore, Mike Robinson with those eight points. We're back after these network messages. Sixteen minutes of regulation play left for somebody to grab on to the ultimate piece of hardware that the state of Illinois has to offer a Class A team. Hales Franciscan trying to become the first Chicago team since 1985 to win a Class A state championship. Mount Carroll trying to win its first ever state championship. Down the lane goes Haynes, too much iron. Here comes Hass and company. And Mount Carroll came out with a man-to-man -man defense trying to change up and cut off that penetration down the lane. That's just exactly what Haynes had and missed the easy shot, which he knocked down in the first half. Yoakum has gotten up only one shot in the first half. The big man, number 53 for Mount Carroll. Pass has been carrying the burden. Delp is one for four, trying to create some space. Kicks it back out. Just quickness is what Hales Franciscan has. Across the lane, back to Schneider again. 
Schneider's just getting warmed up after that 60-foot shot to end the first <laughs> half. Picks right where he, uh, right up where he left off. That was only like a third of his last three pointer. <laughs> that was an easy one. It's down to six, the closest they've been in a long time. Nate Manoy hanging, won't get it. Look at the control by Hass, and out of there they come. Mount Carroll wants to run. Snyder looks left. He's got Bowsman open, but he can't hit it. And Manoy controls. He's strong got rebound by Manoy. Everything on that band is strong, including the hands. Of course, the last shot I felt in transition against two defenders. Only one out of eight in the ball game, trying to get himself going. Richardson, we had a pretty good first half. Kicks it out in the corner, and there's a big three by Nathan Hood. Nathan Hood did that in the first two ball games here in Peoria, in the quarterfinal and semifinal. He just likes that coffin corner three-point shot. Hood had 12 in the quarterfinals, 10 in the semifinals. Colin Bowsman. Open is Snyder again and gets the roll. That penetration always creates problems for defense, whether it's a layup or the kick out to the perimeter. Mount Carroll's been successful here in the early going. Up top, Haynes surveys the situation. Snyder averages only 10 on the year running the offense at the point. Oh, look at that pass, up and in by Hood, but give that assist to Jared Haynes. And that was something that Hales was doing the first half as well. They get behind the defense, didn't really take advantage of it, and that time they were able to. Dealt downtown, not there. Rebound fought for, back up and in by Jeremy Hatz. And we're down to seven again. And again, if you just turned on to see what's going on, as Mr. Delp runs right into Matt Tapper, <laughs> are you okay? I think I had him there. I saw him coming all the way. <laughs> That was quite the catch. Boy, Jordan Delp came full tilt, heading out of the court and onto the sideline. He had a look of determination there. I had to convince him I was not the basketball. <laughs> and you were not the enemy. 34-27, <laughs> they make a dangerous pass, and it went off oh. ass. They say it went off ass, but you got to give credit to Lavelle Richardson, who stayed with it. Much like a defensive back and got there and made yeah, the that's, tip. Yeah, that's not a very smart pass against this Hales team. Certainly uh, very athletic and, and getting their hands on a lot of basketballs out there. So in that situation, you need to make the easy pass and take your advantage of your opportunities in a half-court set. The only loss all year from Mount Carroll, East Chicago, Central Indiana. Down low, Manoy. He'll take a trip to the free throw line. Didn't see who the foul was on there. Is either on Yoakum. Are on uh, number 13, Justin Mosier. Pretty deep into the game for your first trip to the free throw line. Played 19 minutes of basketball. And uh, this is, will be the first toss for Nate Manoy and the Hales Franciscan Spartans who have won 26 and lost six. That one's down. The foul was called against Yoakum, so it's his first. But again, I mentioned that coming out of the halftime is only one foul they need to really send a message and that time you get the big guy Manoy in there Yoakum really a hard foul making him earn two pass with another rebound Snyder clear it out and Hales Franciscan will come up from behind and create turnovers just like that no, just an unforced turnover that time 35 27 Hales Franciscan maintains their lead we're back after these local messages Spartans Welcome come back. in all sizes. Here's Lee Hall. Thank you, Mr. Albrecht. This is Sharita and Edwan Sanders. Daddy is the assistant coach, isn't he? Yes, he is for Hales Franciscan. And tell me about the outfit. This is pretty nice. He's had this on all day. Yes, his father bought it for Christmas for him, and I spray painted it for <laughs> Spartans. Edwan. Mascot. Edwan, how old are you? I'm four. You are. Are you having fun this weekend? Yes. Who's going to win this game? We are. Who's we? We are Spartans. We are Spartans. He likes my uh, little attitude. You like attitude, don't you? Yeah. You want that? Yeah. All right. I'll take. I'll give you mine, and I'm going to take Jim Albrecht's, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, buddy. Good luck. We're number one. <laughs> the Spartans are out in force. Back to you. I like that. Look at that. That looked like a... 
Something about Homeland Security. I'm not quite sure that was quite the outfit there. He was well protected. Manoy was fouled as he went up along the baseline. He sinks the first free throw, and he could put Hales Franciscan back up by 10. Does not. But again, that foul results in only one point. If you get the foul, make him earn the two. Delp in a hurry, back to Yoakum, got it. Yoakum's first two points of the ball game. But Delp set it up, sprinting along the right side and then finding the big man in the middle. Jared Haynes gets it picked. Here goes Jeremy Haas, all by himself or not, not. Well, we got a defense. Credit Kraft for not giving up on the play and hustling down the floor to create that miss from Jeremy Haas. Well, it looked like an easy two. Results in a zero because of the senior Blake Kraft. That shows what speed can do. Haynes, nice shot, but won't get it to fall. Delp comes away with a rebound. So, Hales Franciscan. Kraft once again, very active on the defensive end. Jordan Delp, of course, uh, with some very important threes over the year and 13 points per game, but he's been much better than that down here. 21 in the quarterfinals, 24 in the semifinals, so he's up that season <laughs> average of 13 somewhat. Well, it does surprise me he's one for five. You watch Blake Kraft out there. He's all over Jordan Delp, step for step, wherever he is at on the floor on the offensive end. They'll try to get it down in the low blocks. They go up high, down low, Yoakum, no, he gets it blocked. And they want to go goaltending, they won't get it down at the other end of Hood, and that is not good. Yeah, I didn't think it was goaltending at the other end either. I thought Manoy really timed that, pinned it against the board. Pass makes that quick move, gets the roll. Boy, he really lowered the boom that time on Haynes. Got away with what I thought might have been a charge. Well, and you was able to get the ball to roll in. With Gary London, the head coach of Hills Franciscan, who's a classy guy and doesn't bark a lot. But this is a five-point ball game, folks. It was 21 to 2. Jared Haynes working against Snyder. Has it stolen by Delp. Delp all the way down. Pulls up. Got it. That's the type of play with Jordan Delp that could get him going in this ball game. Little open floor transition. Look at Manoy. Manoy just ate up Yoakum on that move. And Yoakum now with two fouls might have laid off a little bit, not wanting to pick up his third already here in the third period. There's an unforced air. Delp trying to get it back out to Snyder. So Hales up by five, and they get a gift with the basketball. 2.37 remaining here in the third quarter. And it looks like Nathan Hood might be shaken up a little bit. He's holding his back as he comes off the court, holding that left side. Whether he got an elbow or they now have he's strained something down. in that. Uh, scuffle over there on the sideline with Jared Delp. And they're going to take him into the locker room right now. Kraft. Manoy will just kind of park over there on the wing and then make his move whenever he sees any kind of angle. And he could hit that shot if he wanted to. Well, I would tend to give him that shot rather than let him score in the paint, however. Robinson over to Jerome Randall is in the game. Down the lane they go. Ball is shoveled over, and that's a good shot. Up and in. Great job avoiding the contact by Richardson. Pass lost it, got it back, scored, will go to the line. And Whoa, Richardson all time. over his back that time. I think Hass took the brunt of that hit, but he's pretty solid. I'm sure he'll bounce right up and head to the free throw line. Could be a four-point game again. Look at this. From behind, you see Richardson going up aggressively, trying Whoa. to make the block. That's a takedown, two points. That looked like ultimate fighting a little bit. You can use every part of your body. Can Haas complete it? Yes, he can. Jerome Haas now lighting up the scoreboard. He's got 20. This is the closest Mount Carroll's been since the game was 4 to nothing. Under two minutes in the third quarter. Johnson tries to get it down low. Does, but the shot isn't there by Richardson. And we will have Richardson on the end of a foul by Mount Carroll. I really thought Richardson was fouled initially on the first shot. It was cut underneath. His legs were kind of going out towards the baseline. Stayed with it and got the rebound. He'll go to the line for two. Richardson, a 70% free throw shooter. Having a good, good championship night. Sitting on 10 right now. And out of the locker room and back onto the bench is Nathan Hood after getting that lower back or that side checked out after that collision with Jordan Bell. 
in and out. Well, you know, again, the foul situation makes them earn those points, and there were too many layups made in the first half by Hales, and Mount Carroll's now sending the line. However, Hass and, and Yoakum both have two fouls, so we need to keep an eye on that. Kraft goes out, as you saw. As a team, they shoot 67%, one of two on that trip down. Full court pressure is applied. Snyder breaks it, loses it, bad pass, and there's that quickness again. That's how they started the game. Yeah, a little travel. Traveling on Mike Robinson, and boy, that time we saw some passion from Gary London, who throws his program down on the court. Good steal that time out of the press by Robinson, and Mike Robinson gave it right back. Yoko's going to have to come up steal. to help, and he does at midcourt. Turns around, finds his man. Delp's going to force the issue. Glass, not there. Back up and in, Jeremy Hass. Richardson came over to help out on the penetration by Delp, and that lay left Jeremy Hass wide open for the putback. And give Delp some credit as the young freshman goes up and hits it. Man, Jerome Randall forced the issue and got what he was after. The penetration and the little English off the glass to knock that one in. Randall only averages four points a game, depending on the game, and depending on how much time his coach wants to put him in, but he is an impact player. Here's Dell. That's not there. Fighting for it is Manoy and Yoakum, and Manoy will have a tip off of his hands, maintaining possession for about Carroll. Delp still shaking his head out there. 0 for 5 from three-point range. Well, here's what he's doing. He's at least penetrating. He's not going to just sit out there. He's created a couple of things as of late. So if the three isn't dropping, he's still trying to get it to somebody else. He's really got a hand in his face, however, whenever he takes that shot from the perimeter. Drawing a lot of attention after the games he's had so far in this state tournament. There's a tip. Snyder saved it. Pulls up. 18-footer. No. And now, ooh, there's almost a foul over the back by Hass. And if you're Gary London, you probably say one shot with 30 seconds remaining here and a five-point advantage. Hales Franciscan led by nine at the break. They were up early, 21-2. to two. That's right, a 19-point lead. Jared Haynes, who averages 10 points a contest. The junior will run things. Keep an eye on Mr. Manoa on the low block. Here he goes, Haynes up, whistle. Ball's going to be on Hass, it'll be his third foul. That's a big play. Not only do you go to the line, you also get their big man in foul trouble. And right now, I would think he would take him out, at least for this final 3.6, unless he's been in this situation before and knows that Jeremy Hass won't do anything foolish. Seventy percent free throw shooter is Jared Haynes. The deep breath in the miss spot. Well, and that's three out of seven from the free throw line for Hales Franciscan in the ball game. Again, make make them earn those shots. Again, that was a layup opportunity. Haynes had going to the to the basket, came up short. Again and again, no result. Out of there with it quickly. Well, I don't think <laughs> Mr. Snyder's going to get two of those. But the lead is reduced by four during the third quarter as we head to the final eight minutes. Hales Franciscan, eight minutes away from a championship. But don't count the Hawks out. We're back after these local messages. Jim Albrecht, there are 1.8 million reasons that uh, March Madness is better this year, and you're looking at it. That's a brand new scoreboard the Peoria Civic Center put in just this year. You remember a couple of years ago, they had a big screen TV for replays. They took it out. We didn't have it the last year or so. Now it's up there. They've got five crew members uh, running camera. They got three replay machines, so you can come to the game live and see the replays as well. The only downfall is we can't get the wit and wisdom of Jim Albrecht and Matt Tapworth. We're working on that maybe for next year. Back to you. I told you Lee had a big head. I've that never was, seen it that big. That was a scary sight. Manoy up, no. <laughs> Coming out of there with it is who? Delp. Delp is hit from behind. Now at the other end, when we started the fourth quarter, Marcus Fultz oh, fired up a three. That means right now Mount Carroll is 2 of 11 from beyond the arc. Take a look at the third quarter numbers. Still even ball game. The turnovers 
after that first series of nine turnovers in the first quarter by Mount Carroll have been fairly even. Now 17 in the ball game for the Hawks. Well, one thing's for sure. Nobody's leaving anything. Oh, there's a terrible pass. And picking it off is Jared Haynes. He's one against the world. Stops and doesn't score. Minoy, though, has the rebound back up. He can't get it. Yoakum tips it out. Still controlled. Not there. Rebound comes down to Mount Carroll. Delp has it, loses it. That's going to be a jump ball. Possession to go to Hales. You talk about attacking the rim. Just relentless. You get that many shot opportunities, you're going to have something good happen. And Jeremy Haas was nowhere to, where to be found in that play. He was trailing the play. Kicking it in will be Mike Robinson. There's your field goal statistic. Hales Franciscan started hot, but right now, Mount Carroll has caught and surpassed them at 44%. Robinson with a difficult shot, doesn't get it. Yoakum has the rebound. The five-point lead is in jeopardy down the other way. That's two. That is Marcus Fultz. Fultz has barely been a lift off the bench in the two games today. You just see the confidence growing on him as he's been out there on the floor. And the Mount Carroll fans starting to get into it now. They were shell-shocked in the first quarter. Jared Haynes and company. You don't want to let Manoy get there, but he misfires. Rebound loose in the paint, and a jump ball. And that one will belong to Mount Carroll. And Jordan Delp was trying to call a timeout, but before he really had the ball in this situation, he'd rather keep that timeout for later in the ball game and get the alternating possession. Well, I don't want to say it, Matt, but a three would tie it up. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only saying what every Mount Carroll fan is thinking. But they've only rattled two home all night, and one was a desperation half-court heave by Snyder to bring in the within nine right before the horn at the end of the second quarter. Rather unusual there set. There is Snyder. Get it! I was just going to say an unusual set from Mount Carroll having two big guys out front, but it really loosened up the perimeter and allowed Snyder to get a look. He's got 11 points in the ball game, three out of four from three-point range. Maybe thinking it makes it happen for Mount Carroll. This game is tied at 43s. You're not going anywhere, are you? Manoy, this is where he makes his living. What a shot. Boy, and he just rooted uh, Yoakum out from underneath, and Yoakum at 6'7", 215, moved out of the way like he wasn't even there. Dealt for three, got it! Mount Carroll has the lead, and I knew they had to hit threes to get back in it, and they've gotten two yeah, and back to back. Watch Jordan Delp now. He, if he starts feeling he's a streaky player, he can put some points on the board in a hurry. But you're looking at a Hales Franciscan team that is cool, calm, and collected. Believe me. They don't panic. Manoy looking for Haynes. Haynes with a difficult shot. Ball's coming out. And there's Fultz again, and there's a whistle. And the momentum is sitting with the Hawks. Mount Carroll, 32-1, and one, rated number two in the state. I know they've never been down 19-2 to two in the last two years, Matt. I'm sure they haven't, but you got to give them credit for sticking around and staying with the game plan and getting to the point they're at. And Hales has really gotten flustered a little bit, but they've got tremendous defense and tremendous athletes on the floor still. Devin Snyder's uncle, who's in the Marines, is here in attendance, as is his uncle from Cincinnati. A foul out front. That's the fourth team foul against Hales now to go along with four against Mount Carroll. Since it was 21 to two, it was 19 to two after the end of the first eight minutes. Then it was 21 to in the opening seconds of the second quarter. Since that point at 21 to Mount Carroll has outscored Hales Franciscan 44 24. And they've really done it just in their half court set. It's really not been a full court game for them and, and a good game plan that they've executed after that slow start. Delp, can't shake free. Pass in traffic, throws it away. Here comes Jared Haynes, working against Delp. Will hang and hit it. Great right idea Haynes. by Haas and poor execution, trying to get the ball to Yoakum inside, but well, that's a dangerous Haynes pass. has done it all night long, penetrating through the bucket. Boy, Fultz had to go up just to save that pass. Blake Kraft sitting on the sideline, getting set to check back in. Delp wants to make a move. He fires away. Too hard. Rebound. Comes down to Hats and they'll crank it back up. Hales Franciscan leading by the slimmest of margins with time now. Ticking even louder.
Yoakum, double team. Somebody's got to be open. It's Snyder. Didn't get it. Look at the rebound. Pass almost had it, but out of there with it comes Mike Robinson in a hurry. Mike is surveying the floor. No, that's not a good shot, but it comes out into the hands of Haynes. Nobody from Mount Carroll really stopping the ball in the penetration defensively. They let the ball get all the way to the basket. Delt read that wing pass and almost picked it off before it got to Nathan Hood. We've got a timeout on the floor. 3.53 remaining. Everything you've ever wanted to know about basketball, football, anything in Illinois sports is at www.ihsa.org. You want to know about next week's double A's? Hey, it'll be there. And, of course, the IHSA Television Network will be back next weekend in Peoria for the crowning of another double-A champion. But right now, the Class A matters are still up in the air. And, oh, here's a steal by Hask. Hask with trouble. Tries to collect it, and what's the call? A foul. A foul against Blake Kraft. Boy, he came out of that break and it showed he? a highlight on Hass. I think there was a little foreshadowing there as we see him come up with a steal and go strong to the basket. Well, he certainly wasn't going to reconsider pulling out at that point. Hass, right now, sitting at 22 points. He is 2 of 4 from the charity strike. But, of course, uh, Mount Carroll not yet in the bonus situation, so they'll kick it in underneath their own basket in the form of Devin Snyder, who's hit some huge threes here tonight. Delt pulls up, 16-footer, no. Rebound, Manoy had it, lost it, but gathered in by Haynes. Here comes Hales Franciscan, looking for a... A little bit of a bulge here. Manoy, tough shot. Great body control inside, avoiding the contact with Yoakum. Gets it up off the glass and in. Fultz didn't want anything over there on the left wing, so he'll wait for his teammate Snyder. There's Delp. Look at him jump out on him. So he gets it back to Yoakum. Every shot contested, Delp trying to find his way in the lane. There's an open one, but Fultz doesn't want it. Fultz really not looking to shoot the ball, and it's almost a liability having their, you know, four guys on the floor and the fifth guy not looking to shoot the ball at all. A misfire and a foul on Yoakum. That'll be the third on Brett Yoakum. Six-team foul now on Mount Carroll. Hales Franciscan setting on five. Timeouts, two apiece for both teams, and those could come into play before this is over. Turnovers, Mount Carroll had way too many early, but they've calmed down. And this is what they're really good at, Matt. They can spread the floor. Well, and they wanted to spread the floor earlier in the first half, and it really slowed their momentum. But now this this situation, up three, they've got five guys on the floor. They're very effective at this, spreading the floor and penetrating to the bucket. Almost five seconds, so Minoy takes it up. Contact, who's got the ball? It was the Hawks and a foul against Hales Franciscan. Well, that is not what head coach Gary London wanted. You can bet that. I think Minoy thought, well, I, I'm, I'm going to get called for five seconds out here, so I got to penetrate, and that led to trouble. <laughs> Jordan Delp is just shaking his head out there. You mean I had to take that much physical abuse and didn't get a charge out of it. <laughs> Mount Carroll still came over the way with the ball and the foul against Manoy. Well, Manoy is 220 and only a sophomore. He'll he'll be an All-Stater before it's through. He's already third team All-State. Of course, Jeremy Hass is an All-Stater. Bonafide. He'll hang and throw it away. Blake Kraft got a gift. Good position on the baseline that time by Nate Manoy. Cut off Hass. And Hass, that's been his second turnover here in the, in the fourth period, trying to drive the baseline and kick it back into the middle. Manoy up top again. This is big. He can't get it, but he will go to the free throw line. The foul will be on Yoakum again. That'll be his fourth. And right now, it really doesn't matter much as far as fouling out of the game because unless you're going to overtime, you better leave it out there now. Well, Nathan you know, Hood. still, we, we talked about the depth of Mount Carroll. You know, I'll bring up Marcus Fultz again. He's a guy that's out there on the floor right now that's provided some energy, really hasn't looked to shoot the ball, and therefore becomes almost a liability for you offensively. Manoy, who leads the team at 17 points per game, shoots about 67% from the field. Can't believe he missed it. No, but again, that's a good foul in that situation. Even though it's a fourth on Yoakum, not to give him the easy layup, make him earn him at the line. Mount Carroll's going to have to score on this trip down. 
or otherwise they'll be in trouble because Hales Franciscan will whittle away a little clock time and try to get it down to a minute on their next trip down. Here's Snyder being dogged by Robinson. What a great catch on the sideline that time by Jordan Dell. They better get out of that corner. They do. Hands by Hass and No, I disagree with uh -oh, that. Oh, they called him for a double dribble. And I, I think there was, I think there was the defensive man who initiated that first dribble or, or bounce on the floor. And then Jeremy Hass picked it up and tried to go to the lane. The official made the double dribble call. Now it's tension time for Mount Carroll. And keep away time for Hales Franciscan. Full court pressure applied, 127 remaining in regulation. Each team with two timeouts remaining. And of course, the bonus will be in effect for each foul or each team's next foul. Oh, and heads up. They call it out of bounds, and it still belongs to Hales Franciscan, and you can hear the response. I think the crowd is disagreeing with the official on that play, but I'm not so sure I, I agree with the crowd and that's Mount Carroll deflected the ball and neither one of the Hales players touched it. Let's see. I don't think either one of them touched it. They just hit each other. Right. The ball just bounded out of bounds and they were out of bounds by the time they were in the vicinity of the ball anyway. Jared Haynes looking for Randall. Randall can play keep away all night. Yeah, well, Randall's going to be key in this spreading the floor four quarters. He's just a little water bug out there. What a sophomore. He can also handle the basketball. Nate Manoy, we're under a minute. Mount Carroll needs to foul somebody or create a turnover, and the foul is the first thing that happens. Fultz with the personal at the free throw line. It's Mike Robinson, 77% on the year. When you look at the guys that are out there on the floor right now for Hales Franciscan, Mike Robinson shoots 74, or excuse me, 78 percent. We also have uh, Nathan Hood in there at 63 percent. Jared Haynes at 69 percent. That one's way off the mark. Yoakum has it. Probably Is the best free throw shooter misses the front end of one on one. Is there another three left? They don't need it right now. They can go down inside for two. Delp gets it out to Haas. Delp wants to fire away, but he is being contested. Tough shot. Got it. Got it. And a timeout, Mount Carroll. Down to one. Hales leads it. We're back after these network messages. Woo. The state tournament in the great state of Illinois started in 1908. Those are the same shorts that my colleague, Matt, wore around the house when he was growing up. <laughs> what are those, football pads? I'm not they quite sure what be. those shorts were. I guess you went from season to season. The athletic budgets weren't quite what they are today. The Hales. official getting the Hales Franciscan Spartans back out onto the court as they had a long huddle. Hales Franciscan, four for 11 from the free throw line in this ball game. And certainly in this situation, if you're Mount Carroll, you want to pressure them up the floor, try to create a 10 second call, first of all, if they get the ball down at the half court, then foul. But certainly don't let them get the full court easy layup. And if Franciscan gets in trouble, they can call a timeout. They've got two to burn. Will they release anybody? They get it into Robinson. Robinson double teamed, and he's fouled. Looks like Fultz will get the personal foul. This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the exclusive entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of this program without the expressed written consent of the Illinois High School Association. And of course, cost broadcast sales is strictly prohibited. Robinson back at the free throw line. A lot of pressure for a sophomore. Missed the last front end of one one. Knocks one. this one down. Checking back in is Nathan Hood. Also checking back in is Yoakum. Out goes Matt Cruder. Out goes the freshman Jerome Randall for Hales Franciscan. How big is this? Still a one possession ball game. Timeout. Hales Franciscan, as soon as that went through, Gary London jumped off the bench, wanted the timeout, and he got it. So with 33 seconds remaining, and that man's team in front, 
Everybody will huddle. If you're Mount Carroll in this situation, you don't necessarily need a three-point nope. shot right now. There's plenty of time left in this ballgame, 33 seconds. Take your chance to get some penetration to the bucket. Get the ball inside to Jeremy Haas and uh, knock down a quick two that cuts it to a one-point ball game. You still have an opportunity to foul and get the ball back and a chance to win the ball game. Let's listen in to Coach Chris Payne. As hard as you can, all right? If we don't score, foul immediately. Okay, but go for the ball, but foul immediately, all right? So it's Minnesota, but if they jump it, has you go. All right, get this screen set right here at the free throw line, okay? Jordan, if they're flying at you, it doesn't have to be a three. You can shot fake and go to the basket, all right? Listen, we don't score. We got to hard at the reverse. Come hard at the reverse. Hey, hey, if you get a steal, unless you have a layup, pull it out. You got a timeout. I don't know if Gary London will have a voice left tomorrow. I do know. <laughs> What Mount Carroll wants to do, exactly as Matt Taphorn said, they don't have to have the three. You heard Coach say, hey, if they're jumping out at you, you don't have to have the three. But if we miss the shot, the obvious must foul. And I like the full court pressure here by Hales Franciscan. Again, making them work to get the ball up the floor. Snyder has two people on him, but he's got a free man. That's Jeremy Haas. He goes to the glass, and he's fouled. And Hey. Well, if he makes two, that's beautiful for Mount Carroll because tell you it what, stops the clock. Great foul by Nate Minoy, too. Hass went up, and he's even flinching a little bit, taking that trip to the free throw line. But we got two big bodies inside banging, and let's watch this play again. Jer Jeremy Hass goes up strong. Woo! Nate Minoy is going to make sure that he earns those two points. <laughs> a couple of heavyweights fighting over a rim. Hass is two of four. net on that one checking in is Jerome Randall for his ball handling skills obviously and out is Nathan Hood also in is Matt Pruder as out goes Yoko Well, that's just a little too much thinking about it, I think, for Jeremy Hess, but you can't fault that young man because he's done everything to get his Mount Carroll Hawks back to within two with 27 seconds remaining. It's keep away time for Hales Franciscan, but a quick foul out front by Fultz, and to the line they go as Jared Haynes walks down the court. And Mike Robinson, again, their best free throw shooter on the season shooting 78%. Knocked down the last two after the front end of a one-on-one -on -one miss that zone breaking or press breaking setup that time by Hales is designed to get him the ball out in the out-of-bounds play Haynes and Hood will fill the lane spots for Hales Franciscan Yoakum will come right back in obviously his offense is needed now even though he's playing with four Mr. Robinson looked a little hard but got the back of it and now he gets to decide whether it's a two possession game for Mount Carroll or just one. He decides on two. Big free throws for Mike Robinson. And now desperation time. Full court pass knocked away. Hood steals it, but he stepped out of bounds. Boy, craft right there again. Pass. Great hustle down the floor. They've, they've seen that full court pass that they've made to Jeremy Haas before. There to defend it was Kraft once again. Snyder trying to look inside, but nobody's there. Pass with a three. Got, Got it. it. Got it. It's a one-point game with 18 seconds remaining, and Jeremy Haas, who had not, had not hit a three-pointer all season long, nails his first one in a pretty important moment. I guess that makes up a little bit for that air-balled free throw, but you got to love it when a senior like that steps up and takes a big shot, and he knocked down a big one to pull this game within one point once again. And what it does is, no matter what Hales Franciscan does, unless they get a three-point play, makes it a one-possession game again. Let's go see what Coach Chris Payne is saying. All right? Right behind the top guard, right when they throw it in, go double hard. He's not doubling right away. Okay. Behind you. No, but like not when they're just standing there, right? Not when no. Don't double when they're standing there. Get behind them. Yeah. All right? And then go in behind and double. Okay? 
when we get in that trap, make sure you're going for the ball. We might be able to get a steal out of this. We don't have any time. Okay? So if they go down and knock the free throw down, we're coming down, Delp, get to the basket. Or Devin, get to the basket. If we're down three, okay, if we're down three, I want Delp, whatever side Jordan's on, we're going to run him all the way to the other side for a three-pointer. If we're down, down, you two make a play. You talk about spelling a little intensity on somebody's face. I think Chris Payne covered all the bases, didn't he? He certainly did. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with letting him get the inbounds, uh, the ball inbounds. They're really not looking to deny it. They're looking to let them catch the ball and then trap and see if they can come up with a steal. I think in this situation, you, you, you've got to deny the ball inbounds. Precious seconds and precious separation between the two. And you wondered why they call it March Madness. Kraft will go baseball. It is all the way down to Robinson. Got it. And now they've got to have the three, and they throw it away. They throw it away. That was a planned play by Gary London, who wanted to release Robinson. And Robinson said hello with a pull-up lay-in. And that is just about all it will take to win a state championship if you add a few free throws. And, and Coach Gary London was about a foot, about three feet off the ground, jumping for joy that the play he designed in that huddle worked. They release again. This time it's Haynes, and that's a state championship. All they've got to let them do is go down the floor. Hales Franciscan will be the first Chicago Class A state champion since 1985. It's over. It's over. <laughs> the jubilation begins out there on the floor. The disappointment certainly for Mount Carroll, but Hales, the tremendous start they had in this ball game, deserved this victory. Well, and you got to look back at the beginning. It's a full 32 minutes. Mount Carroll had a terrible eight minutes. They couldn't answer the pressure from Hales Franciscan. They got behind 21-2. Without that spread, they're the state champion. But they got behind and couldn't quite climb the deficit. They, they did get the lead once again, but uh, it was a little too much of a hill to climb. But what a game and some big threes. And let's go out to Gary London, who may have had the biggest leap of the night after that basket by Mike Robinson, the sophomore. Lee? Well, we've uh, <laughs> we dug Gary London out of the scrum there. A little rugby game broke out there. Coach, uh, unbelievable. You know a team's going to make a run at you, but what an unbelievable run by Mount Carroll, and you guys somehow held him off. i tell you what. We said, we said that we wanted to win every quarter. But I tell you what, we won the first quarter, and we lost the second quarter, we lost the third quarter, but our guys never quit. We knew that uh, Mount Carroll was not going to go away. We know, that, and, and this was a championship game, you know, it's never going to be easy, never going to be easy. You talk about the heart of your kids and, and pulling this off. Oh, I tell you what, I can't say enough about Mike Robinson right now. He's a sophomore, and for him to step up and hit those free throws like that, he missed the front end of a one and one earlier. But I tell you what, we got a lot of confidence in him, and he came back and he nailed him. He nailed him. I tell you what, I'm so proud of these guys. They worked all year long, and they deserve it. They deserve it. Bringing home a state championship back to Chicago. First time in a long time in Class A. I tell you what, I hope everybody in Chicago is celebrating hard. Party Chicago, we did it. <laughs> All right, Mike Robinson, come on. We're going to bring you in here. Congratulations. Thank you. Some big free throws down the stretch there. Yes, they were very big. I had to hit them with my team. We could go back to Chicago without this trophy. Last time we came in 93, we came in second place. And we want to revenge. We, want to we came in first place today. What was going through your guys' minds? You're up 21 to 2. This Mount Carroll team comes back, makes a run at you, ties you. What was going through your guys' minds? We, was, we, we had to stay together. We had to stay together as a team. We couldn't, we couldn't break down. We had to stay together. What does it mean to you to take a state championship back home? It means a lot for me as a sophomore. My, this is my first year being on varsity, and I made big plays, and it feels, it feels great. I, I, it's undescribable. Mike Robinson is our country insurance player of the game. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Yes, thank you. Thank All you. Right. Go celebrate. All right, Jim, back to you. Well, man, everybody was talking about the sophomore, Matt Minoy, but another sophomore, Mike Robinson, came through in the clutch. We're back with more from the Peoria Civic Center. Hales Franciscan. Hail to Hales Franciscan. Back after these local messages.
field. Well, there it is, 58-53. Well, there were so many big plays, Matt, but of course that release on the inbounds after Jeremy Hassett cut it to a one-point game. All alone is Mr. Robinson down there. He was contested, but he pulled up and drained it after making two important free throws right before that. Let's throw it to public address announcer Paul Herzog for the presentation of the second and first place trophy. Chicago Collins and a large member. Secretary Catherine Finch of Winnebago, an at-large member. And Treasurer Greg Bradley of Mount Zion. At this time, let's meet the Hawks of Mount Carroll, who finished the season in second place, a record of 32 and 2. Superintendent Mary Bush. Principal Tim King. Athletic Director Bob Hartman. Head coach, Chris Payne. <laughs> Assistant coach, Andy Hughes. <laughs> Assistant coach, Jeff Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Assistant coach, Mark McCumber. <laughs> and assistant coach, Tim Schneider. And now the Hawks, number 13, Justin Mosier. Fifteen, Jason Hughes. Twenty-one, Jordan Delp. Twenty-three, Colin Bowsman. 25, Devin Schneider. 31, Jeremy Hass. 33, Matt Kruder. 35, Marcus Foltz. 41, Matt Disher. 45, Clay Ostro. 53, Brett Yoakum. 53. And the managers, Colin McCumber. Chris Foltz. And Drew Galantine. The Hawks of Mount Carroll, second place, Class A, 2003. At this time, please meet the Hales Franciscan Spartans, a record of 27 and 6, 2003, Class A, champion. Superintendent, Robert Anderson. Principal. Bernard Murray. <laughs> Athletic Director, Sean Stalling. <laughs> Head Coach, Gary London. <laughs> Assistant Coach, Mark Finner. Assistant coach, Daryl Sanders. <laughs> Assistant coach, Kevin Bush. Here are the Spartans. 12, Blake Kraft. 15, Lavelle Richardson. 14, Nathan Hood. 
25, Norman Shropshire. <laughs> 42, Andre Johnson. <laughs> 21, Ari Hall. <laughs> 4, Junies Hayward. 10, Gerard Haynes. 5, Ivano Clay. 34, Brandon Kendall. 23, Adam Taylor. 33, Nate Minoy. 3, Mike Robinson. 50, Jerome Randall. 44, Austin Chapito. 40, Jeffrey Wilson. The Spartans, Class A champs, 2003. And now will Coach Payne and the captains of Mount Carroll step forth and receive their second place trophy. And will Coach London and the captains of Hales Franciscan step forward to please first place championship trophy 2003 Class A. Congratulations both teams on a great championship game. Congratulations the IHSA and the city of Peoria. A great March Madness experience in 2003. Thank you for being here. Please buckle up when you leave the area. And please, please drive home safely. Thank you. Well, first things first, Matt. As far as Mount Carroll is concerned, you know how they feel right now. They were that close. But nonetheless, a season that will live for a very, very long time. What did them in was a 21-2 deficit at the start. They had the heart. They just didn't have enough gas at the end, even though they did take the lead momentarily. But that is a hard way to come back. Well, we felt that might be a problem for them in the game. But you got to give them credit for coming back the way they did, not giving up. They stayed in this ball game to the final seconds. Uh, but you got to give credit where credit is due, and that's to Hales Franciscan. Very well coached team, class team, a great reflection of Gary London and his ball club. Just, you know, an excellent performance here tonight. Very disciplined and a great play at the end of the game to really give them the victory. And sometimes it boils down to a chess match. One coach designs one play as Chris Payne did defensively. And then, of course, Gary London countered with his play and his play worked. And then the turnover by... Mount Carroll and that was all she wrote now as far as Hales Franciscan is concerned the first Chicago Class A state championship since Providence St. Mel and of course Gary London mentored of course by the former coach who won it Mr. Shields in 1985 with Providence St. Mel but look at who they have coming back very exciting Mike Robinson's hit some key free throws down the stretch Nate Minoy both sophomores you know, tremendous talent coming back along with Jerome Randall, the fire plug out on the perimeter. So it should be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see this team coming back down here in the next few years. Lee Hall is standing by as soon as we get a camera over there with one of those great sophomores. Nate Manoy is standing by and uh, Lee, take it away. <laughs> All right, there's a throng out here. We got Nate Manoy. Boy, you guys got that big lead and you were able to hold him off just enough. Yeah, man, um, I, I believe, um, oh, 
We got kind of lax there for a minute, man, that big lead. But uh, Mike Robinson came through for us, man. Mike Robinson, great guy, man. That's a great guy. Big clutch player, man. Serious all the time, man. Hard work paid off, man. Tell me about tell me about the heart of this team able to hold off that Mount Carroll comeback like that. The team had it's a, it's a determination, man. It started from the beginning, man. It started in conditioning. Six o'clock in the morning. You get up that early? Man, you got to, man. When you, our, slogan, our slogan was, man, in the middle of the season, if you want something you never had before, you got to go out and do something you never did before. Tell me, how, we did, man. tell me how much it means to you and this team to take this trophy back home to Chicago. Man, it's big, man. It's big. It's big for our school, man. We got a small school, man. And now everybody can see, man, maybe we'll get a better enrollment next year. It's big for everybody, man. Our family's depending on it. The players did too, man. Thank you, Nate. And man, I gotta tell you, that is one happy state champion. Way to go, guys. There you see the Peoria papers crowning a new state champion. And uh, Chicago Hope, the Class A Girls State Championship, went to Chicago Hope. And that's only miles apart, a few miles apart. Yeah, right down the street, we're told. So. Uh, the girls got the hardware first. The boys in the neighborhood bring home some more, and we still have the class double A's next week. And uh, it'll Matt, be that's sure a tough, hard to top the excitement we saw this weekend and the talent, the play, the enthusiasm by these fans out here. It's just a, a great atmosphere, and, and I love to see the kids that are here with their parents, just enjoying this yeah. atmosphere. The kids in the exhibit hall, the, the March Madness exhibition. It's just a tremendous weekend in both single A and double A. It's a, a lot of excitement for Peoria, and, and they're sure proud to have it every weekend. Let's see how Mount Carroll's head coach is feeling about finishing number two in the state. Lee? All right, thanks a lot, Jim. Chris Payne, I thought it's a great thing about America. It's a great thing about March Madness. I'm standing down here watching Hales Franciscan celebrate their state championship. I'm looking over their shoulders. Your crowd is going nuts. Your guys are hoisting the second place trophy. I know it hurts. But gosh, it's a great feeling at the same time. You know, I'm real proud of our kids. They've worked real hard for this, and you got to take your hat off the hills. You know, they're a great basketball team, and you know, we came all the way back there and took a lead, and they showed a lot of composure, and and uh, our kids showed a lot of heart out there, and uh, you know, we could have given up very easily down 19 to two at the end of the first quarter, and we didn't, and the kids showed a lot of heart coming back. It just wasn't enough. When you look at guys like Jeremy Hass and uh, some of your seniors out there, you. you kind of brings a lump to your throat, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, we brought a lot of these kids up as freshmen and sophomores, and I've been around them for three or four years now, and uh, it's going to be a lot different first day of practice next year, not seeing those guys out there. Coach, you've been here before as a player. You've been here now as a coach. It's uh, it's just, it's. I know it's it's bittersweet for you right now. Yeah, you know what, as a player, I didn't get, to, I wasn't here the last night because, you know, we got beat in the quarterfinals, so, you know, I'll take this. And you got to really take your hats off to the kids. Second place in the state, the school of 145 kids, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Coach, congratulations. Right, thank you. All thank the you. best to you. Chris Payne, second place, not too shabby. There's almost 500 other schools in the state that have trade places with him, Jim. There's no doubt about that. Uh, very class act. And if you want to see a picture of what this game was all about, look at the face of Jeremy Hass as we have as he walked by here. He looks like he took on Roy Jones in the ring. It's a, it's a tribute to both of these teams, but the trophy, numero uno, goes to Hales Franciscan. Don't forget, next week back in Peoria, right here on the IHSA Television Network for the AA crown. My thanks to you, Matt. Always a great pleasure working with you and all the guys and the ladies in the truck, and of course, Lee Hall who sets the fashion pace here in Peoria. I'm Jim Albrecht. Thanks for joining us this weekend, everybody. Hope you enjoyed some great basketball. More yet to come next Friday, starting at noon.